So I just watched the Flash movie and well, at least I enjoyed it. Cause this movie does have its fair share of entertaining stuff and also fair share of not so good stuff. This movie achieves what it wants to do. If you wanna watch this movie only for the cameos or maybe the easter eggs and stuff, you are going to find a lot of them. But can that save a movie? Well, let's discuss in this video. But I did enjoy it. most of the cameos in this movie. I don't wanna spoil but it looks pretty good. To be fair, this movie does what Spider-Man No Way Home did with all the nostalgia and the story stuff. But the thing done better by that movie was there are so much set up for Spider-Man. So when some emotional scene happened, even if the movie doesn't focus on that, we feel bad for the characters. But in this movie, I don't know, the setup was missing. So sometimes when Flash's mom or Flash's dad does some stuff, I don't feel the emotion because I don't know these characters. For a basic recap of the movie without spoiling much, the Flash from the Snyderverse talks with Ben Affleck and he can travel time and when he does that, he goes back to an alternate universe where he changes the past and well, that leads to some dire circumstances. And this leads him to the alternate universe with Michael Keaton. The multiversal stuff in this movie is pretty underwhelming cause the stuff that happens with Supergirl is pretty much the same as that of Henry Cavill's Superman. Which is, I don't know why, but they could have made an alternate story with Supergirl. Cause in the comics, Superwoman is Clark Kent's sister who happens to be sent to Earth at a different time. And that was done well enough in the CW's show. So this movie misses a little bit with Superwoman a supergirl or whatever they wanna call her. And as for Michael Keaton, he is in the movie as much as he is in the trailer. He is not like the super integral part of the movie but he, he is like the failsafe. If the movie doesn't work, at least he is there to bring in the nostalgia of the audiences. So Michael Keaton is as much of a plot device as Andrew and Toby were in No Way Home. So I can't say it's better or worse but I did enjoy Michael Keaton as Batman. Yeah I know I'm comparing it with No Way Home but this movie is not at all close to No Way Home but since the concept of the movie are kinda same I just compared them. The Zod scenes in this movie were pretty much great recreation of the Man of Steel stuff so I did like that and a little bit of spoiler. This movie officially reboots the DC and in the post credit scene we get to know which are some of the characters from the old DC who will move into the James Gunn's new DC. And I'm trying to keep this video spoiler free so that's all I can say. So if I have to read it, it would be a 7 out of 10. Anyway, that's it for today's video, hope you enjoyed my video and if you did hit the like, share, subscribe and do all the things everyone asks you to do on YouTube.